Well, well, hello there. We hope you guys have enjoyed the Ukraine video series that we've been putting out over the last few weeks. That's come to an end, but we figured why not sit down on our couch, take a little road trip down memory lane <laughs> and talk about some experiences and also a few reasons why we enjoyed visiting Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. We had such a good time in, in Ukraine and mm -hmm. we honestly, like it wasn't a place that we were even going to go to this year. Yeah, it's like, it, it was, was a last minute decision yes, to be honest. It really was. It was the, it's the biggest travel surprise of the year for us in terms yeah. of us really enjoying it. And what, what happened was, as Canadians, we could only spend three out of six months in the Schengen zone, yes. which is uh, basically the most of Europe. Most of Europe. And so we had to get out, and Ukraine was one of the options of a place we could go. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've always wanted to visit Ukraine, but one of the reasons that we came there was strategic. And we had so many projects this summer, it was like one after the other after the other, that by the time we arrived in Ukraine, we hadn't, we didn't really have time to do a lot of prior research. So we yeah. were just kind of hitting the ground running. And so everything was fresh and new to us. And yeah. we ended up loving it so much that we wanted to share 10 reasons why we think you should visit Ukraine. And Sam even got a cool shirt. I Check did, yeah. This, the, I, I got this in the Viv. It's like, oh man, I love this. Love this shirt. So number one, let's talk about affordability. Ukraine is really, really cheap for travelers and we're gonna give you guys some examples. Let's start with accommodations. So we stayed in an Airbnb yeah. and I remember when we were searching for prices online, um, you can find like really nice entire apartments, usually anywhere between 15 to $35. Yeah. And if you look for anything higher, it's like a luxury, like a $40 apartment is yeah. luxurious. These are really nice apartments, big, spacious, and great locations. Yeah. Yeah. Both in, uh, we went to Kiev and Lviv, mm -hmm. and both times we were able to find like apartments we were very happy with, uh, yeah. both under $30. Yeah. So excellent value. And the next thing you'll find really inexpensive and great value in Ukraine is dining out because we were able to go and have like great meals, mm -hmm. usually between five to 10 US dollars. Yeah, and when you're looking at 10 US dollars per person, that was usually several courses yeah, paired with like wine and dessert. Wine, dessert, sharing appetizers, yeah. things like that. And also you can find even more budget meals. Like you can definitely, you can have cheap bites for under $5, for under yeah. 5 US dollars, like sometimes three, $4. So yeah, there's excellent value dining out. And it was just, it was so fun. It was a great experience getting to do that frequently because of the prices. Yes. And another thing that was really cheap, transportation, probably the cheapest yes. transportation we've used so far. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it was the equivalent of 20 US cents. It's 20 US cents. At, at the, time, the time we visited, I remember it being five in local prices, which was 20 US cents at the yeah. time. And yeah, it was it, taking the metro was a was a whole was a whole experience. We'll talk about that a bit later. Yeah. And the last thing we found to be great value was uh, shopping for groceries, and mm -hmm. we would get like chocolate, wine, fresh produce, meats. But we didn't actually eat at home as much as we normally do in other countries. Yeah, because restaurants were so cheap, so we're like, yeah, we're gonna splurge. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we had lots of really good meals. So reason number two, we found Ukraine to be super underrated. And yeah. we especially noticed this and the lack of travelers. Like we would yeah. be visiting some of the main attractions and like looking around. It was just mostly local or domestic travelers, but you don't see a lot of foreigners. Yeah, you don't see like these big tour buses and then no. like, you know, all these people piling out and Not at all. there weren't massive lines to go to places. No. It was just, I found that really refreshing because in, in some cities in Europe, it's just, it's, it's gone to the point where it's overwhelming to visit yeah. because there's just so much going on. But we found there's just this really underrated aspect of being in Ukraine. So the third point is we want to talk about safety. And we both felt very safe in both mm -hmm. Kiev and Lviv. Mm -hmm. We were going around uh, with our cameras out. We, also, we didn't feel it at any time like we were in danger doing that. We also found that just by like, I was jogging at night, for instance, in Kiev and ha had no issues whatsoever. Nobody hassled us. There was, no. there was a zero, a zero no. hassle factor. Now moving on to point number four, let's talk about friendliness because we kind of thought we were going to have a bit of a language barrier and maybe yeah. it would be really hard to communicate and people were going to be like really harsh and stern. But honestly, we had a really positive experience. Yeah, yeah. it was it was positive right from the beginning. We'll mm -hmm. start with their Airbnb host. Both, she was so nice. 
Both of them were fantastic. Oh yeah, and the other guy too. He came to pick us up at the train station. Yeah. Like I've never had a host so, come and get you and like yeah. welcome you. We were very friendly in both places. Yeah. Uh, for instance, in Kiev, I remember our host printed out our train tickets for us last yeah. minute. And like you were saying in Lviv, we got picked up at the train station yeah. and we also got dropped off at the airport and that's never happened anywhere else we've stayed yeah. around the world. So Sounds people really like cool. we found we found locals were really going above and beyond yeah. to make us feel welcome. Yeah. And that also extended to restaurants as we started to revisit some of our favorite places. I remember there's one place in Kiev we went to Opanas in the park nearby our house. Oh yeah, several times. Yeah, and the staff got to know us and everyone was very friendly and like it just every time we went there we felt even more welcome. Mm -hmm. And we found that um, compared to other parts of Europe, maybe not as much English is spoken by the average person, but even people who couldn't speak English well, we found, we found there was like lots of friendly gestures lots and whatnot. Lots of smiling, that's how you yeah, get it done. Yeah, lots of smiling. <laughs> and your tip was to learn... Oh yeah, so yeah. as a tip, I would recommend learning to read the Cyrillic alphabet. Like yeah. that's going to help you out a lot, just being able to kind of like sound out the, the you know food names like names of words yeah exactly um so and you yeah. did a better job of that than i did so yeah well i mean like we had been traveling in kyrgyzstan and we've been to bulgaria right. so like it just comes in handy it's a good skill to have yeah that's a that's a really good travel tip yes. for ukraine definitely okay part number five guys is the local food scene and if you've been watching our channel for any length of time we ate a lot yeah you know you know we ate a lot and you know we're always going to talk about food wherever we go so we ate some really delicious things. One of my favorite things was the Ukrainian dumplings called Veroniki. Oh, those were so good. We ate those like all the time. Yeah. And then when we went out to Lviv, I really enjoyed a dish called Banosh, which basically it kind of had like a polenta cornmeal mix with bacon and yeah, sheep, sheep. goat cheese, sheep's cheese. Oh, that was so good and hearty. And which yeah. ones did you like? Um, we had Varuni, I believe it is, like those stacks of yeah. potato pancakes. They're just like... And sometimes, okay, so sometimes <laughs> we would just get the plain pancakes, but other times we would get it with like this creamy mushroom yeah. sauce and chicken. Oh. And oh my goodness, that was so good. So and we good. also had quite a bit of borscht. I yeah. mean, that's kind of a classic. Yeah, so those are four things you can try. And yes. there's lots of great traditional Ukrainian restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, we went to a lot of them. I remember in Kiev, we really liked the Panas, we really like Pervak, and then we went to Seven Piggies in Lviv. So yeah, yeah. they were all really good. Yeah, and, and the food is very hearty and filling. So, so bring your appetite and maybe skip breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of food, number six, let's talk about the international food scene because yeah. there's some of that going on. So while we were in Kiev, we had quite a bit of Georgian food that's yeah. really popular oh, over that, there. That was delicious. We, we yeah. found a place called Mama Manana. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, you know, that, that that's that's buying for maybe even our favorite restaurant in the whole, like yeah. that we ate in the whole country. It was, it was so, so good. good. So, so good. We also had great Korean food. Yeah. We ate sushi. We didn't show this in Lviv, but we found a place, a little Italian place that was doing like wood oven fire pizzas. Yeah. They were delicious too. Yeah. And then there was also like little, little pop-up restaurants. Oh yeah. yeah. So like you would have these little like minivans mm -hmm. that would like open up and it would be a little coffee shop or a little cocktail bar. And they would usually park in the parks or like near intersections and you can just go and order your coffee yeah. in the morning. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. So it was just a great, great, great food scene great food. In, in Ukraine. And that's one of the reasons we love traveling in Ukraine so much. There was good food. <laughs> so number seven, let's talk about transportation because it's pretty cool especially in Kiev we rode the metro a lot to get around like yeah. right from day one and not only was it cheap but the stations are so grand so you'd go like underground and you'd have these like massive yeah. like arches and yeah, they had like chandeliers and these cool yeah, decorations. Yeah, it was an experience. And, and the, yeah. trains, the trains tended to be quite rustic. And oh, they, they, they were they were rattlers. They were shakers. And yeah, I, I, we, we kind of, I don't know for some reason, we have this weird thing about enjoying that kind of thing. <laughs> and the other cool part is that it has the deepest metro station in the world. Yes, so, so that would be Arsenalna. Yeah, five it's minute like, ride, isn't it? Yeah, it takes five minutes. Five minutes on the you escalator. You have to ride down two separate yeah. escalators. It's a five minute ride and, and they're, they're very yeah. fast moving escalators so you yes. can imagine how deep that's going. Yeah, so that's cool. And so the other cool, the other, the other part I wanted to mention about transportation too was we found it really easy to get from the airport uh, to the city center. We just took mm -hmm. a bus and then we transferred onto the metro in Kiev. Yeah. And then the other thing that was great was that we took the train from Kiev to Lviv. 
and uh, it was it was awesome. Like the train was very comfortable. It left on time. In fact, it even arrived five minutes earlier than scheduled, which is always a nice thing. That's uh, it tends to be rare. Yeah. When it and I remember trains. it was very affordable, so yeah. we actually upgraded to first class. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I think it, it, our, our tickets, if I remember correctly, were, were 500 local, which was about 20 US dollars. So yeah, yeah, it was very affordable, and that was for like a five six hour ride, if I remember correctly. So yeah, transportation was a was a big bonus of uh, tra traveling in Ukraine. So number eight, let's talk about architecture, and I feel like that's reason enough to visit Ukraine. Honestly, going into it, I was kind of expecting super drab, Soviet-looking architecture. And you do get a few buildings like that, but honestly, like most of the streets were stunning. Like, yeah. let's talk about Kiev first. Like, yeah. some of the streets in that city looked straight out of Paris. Like, everything was so ornate yeah. and elaborate. I was thinking, thinking of Paris or Buenos Aires, like really nice yeah. balconies. And you were also you were also impressed by the colors as well. Yeah, so a lot of the buildings were painted these bright colors. Like, you had teals and yeah. blues and yellows. And I just thought it added like a really nice pop yeah. of color, especially on a gray day. Yeah, I agree with you. And it was yeah. interesting to see how some buildings were being maintained better than others. It just gave yeah. it, it gave some variety while we were walking yeah. around. And you know what? We actually noticed quite a bit of restoration work taking yeah. place in some of the you know older, more yeah. historic buildings. So yeah, the architecture ended up being one of the more underrated features of, of visiting Ukraine for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So number nine, let's talk about churches because I feel like this is the the main attraction in most cities. Well, we only did Kevin Levy, but we saw a lot of churches um, and monasteries yeah. and cathedrals. Um, and just speaking personally, I'll just interject here. I mean, if you've been traveling in Europe for a while, you can actually get fatigued from visiting churches because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, one after the other. Some of them yeah. look similar between yeah. cities to cities. But the churches and monasteries and cathedrals in Ukraine were yeah. were quite impressive. Yeah, they were yeah. very different. Like first of all, you've got, you know, that classic onion dome yeah. like on top of the churches. A lot of them were gold, so like you can see them shimmering off mm -hmm. in the distance. Also, like just like a lot of the buildings in the city, we found that the churches were very colorful. Sometimes as as impressive as they were from the outside, it's like once you went in, they were even more yeah. impressive inside, like they were so ornate. And it was a whole experience, especially some of the more orthodox ones. Like for you, you would have, you would be covering up. And, yeah. So yeah. as a woman, you do have to cover up and like kind of wear a scarf over your head. So something yeah. to keep in mind. And yeah, I should mention that these are active places of worship. So oftentimes we'd be going in, but people would be praying and worshiping. So you kind of have to yeah, be mindful right. of that and like trying not to approach. And in Lviv, we uh, we we kept every every church. It seemed that we went to visit. There was a yeah. wedding going on, so we yeah. were we were kind of like wedding crash in Lviv. We yeah. were being very discreet trying to film but it was a uh, it was fascinating. In Lviv you have many different types of churches. I think. Yeah we visited Armenian churches, Jesuit churches, Bernardine right. churches so yeah lots of churches to yeah. choose from for sure. So we yeah we certainly had our fill in Ukraine. <laughs> So for number 10, we want to talk about the diversity of places in Ukraine. Yeah. And I know we're probably not the best people to talk no. about this since we only visited two destinations, but we've had so many different suggestions in the comments, yeah. like in all the videos we've been making, and yeah. we've actually been researching these places. So yeah, there's, and, a, there's a lot of yeah. na there's a lot of nature. Um, you can, the, the one place that kept coming up was Odessa. You guys gotta go to Odessa. Yeah. And so there's just, there's a lot of places that we didn't get to even explore within the country mm -hmm. that make us want to go back yeah and revisit again because we had such a good experience in Kiev and Lviv yeah and and yeah it was just it was just an awesome experience for us so it makes yeah. us want to go back to the Ukraine and to, to experience a whole lot more so if any of you have tips and suggestions of like some places that you think would be great to visit maybe some underrated places in the country please let us know in in the comments below because I think this will really help others so that is a wrap for this video and those are our 10 reasons to visit Ukraine we hope yeah. we were able to inspire you guys a little bit to add a new country to your bucket list yeah exactly this is a place we really enjoyed and we hope these travel tips to Ukraine really helped you out and if you have any other tips you'd like to share please leave those below in the comments and yeah, we just had a great time in Ukraine. We can't express that enough. So just go out there and visit. All right. Ta-ta.